post um, studies in the NOMAC channel and just type questions or answer my questions through the NOMAC channel. You're welcome. Okay, so let's start. So the point of this study is um, to explain what to do with your pieces in the middle game. So right after the opening. So the chapters, if you can see there, are first rooks, and then I'll go to knights, bishops, and then queens. If you notice, I'm not really covering pawns, because uh, pawn structure is its own topic. So um, I'll do a separate one if I do a lecture in the future again uh, on pawn structure, and then I'll, I'll do another one on piece evaluation. So this just covers what you do with your pieces in the middle game. Okay, so here's the first position. So one of the goals with the rooks is to win control over the open file. So if you notice, white has two rooks controlling the open file. So my question to the group is, after you have one control over the open file, what is the next step? Can I answer in the no mic channel, please? I'm going to be asking a lot of questions, so as long as I get one or two responses. Oh, no, that's not the answer I'm looking for. Okay, infiltrate down the open file. That's correct. So I'll see zero. So now that you have one control over the open file, you can infiltrate down the open file. So normally we infiltrate down the, to the seventh rank. Uh, the reason for that is because most of the pawns are sitting on the seventh rank. So after the strong move rook e7, um, what are we threatening? Just any person can answer. Yes. So now we've got two pressure on that. So the point of invading is also to find targets. So f7 is a sensitive point in this position. So now I'm just gonna show a few variations so you can understand. Uh, black can trade and now F7 is delicate. If he tries to defend F7, we can put more pressure on F7. And notice this um, this knight is also pinned. So it's almost, we can't really alleviate the pressure now anymore. And F7 will fall. So we infiltrate it down the file and then we won. Uh, we won because we had a target in F7. Um, Rook E7 is not the best move here. I'll just briefly show you guys the best move. So the best move is Knight F5. Uh, the reason being is this Knight's very well placed with threats on Knight E7 and also uh, later Queen G5. So I just want to show an example line. Okay, you can play Knight F5 after Rook E7 as well. So let me just show this as well because uh, this line's. Also quite fun. So I'm just trying to remember here. And this is very strong, so this is forced. If I remember correctly. And then we can sack. Okay, yeah, and then we take. And now the incoming attack is a bit strong. Uh Sorry, uh, I don't want to repeat. Queen here. I'm just trying to. Okay, I think the rook can come back. Yeah. And then. Uh, to sack the queen at this stage because the attack is too strong. Yeah, I'm just showing you that uh, knight f5 uh, is the best move, uh, but uh, knight e5 is good enough in this position because f7 is the same of, uh, sensitive, sensitive square, so it's a target for us after we infiltrate it down the file. So now we won't always um, get open lines, so now I'm, the next two chapters are just briefly to show you how you can open up the lines. So here's a position. So um, black has two pawns on the side of the board, this side, and then white will have three. So black starts with this move b5, 
let me b5 uh, and a5 will start something called the minority attack it's called the minority attack because we're attacking with less pawns versus a structure with more pawns so uh, let's continue 92 rook b8 um uh say rook c1 okay wait, let me say a3 because uh, we want to stop b5 from opening files now a5 so we support uh b4 uh say rook c1 b4 takes takes um he doesn't want to take back because that makes his pawn structure a bit weak so let's say passes and we can take and we take and now we've opened up the files and also we've created some uh quite a weak pawn on c3 so this is our point of attack like in the last chapter f7 was our point of attack now we have c3 uh, this is quite an important strategic concept to understand especially in these positions you'll see this in queen's gambit declined and some other structure um where you have the three pawns versus the two and you can do the minority attack to force open lines and create a weakness, usually on c3. Okay, so here's another position. So the strong move a5 here yeah, forces um, open position on the queen side. So we'll either take or we'll push further. So we'll either open up lines to our favor or we'll use the expansion of the pawn. I'm not going to go into too much detail of this. I'm just showing this a5 move. It's these break moves at the side of the board. So we open up lines so we can activate our rooks. If we don't play a a5, by the way, if we play a move like h3, uh, then black can play this move a6. a5 is also a move, just a6, for example. Then when we push, he can close up the side of the board. Now our rook doesn't have the open file that we wanted. So a5 right away was wrong move. Uh, sorry, I'm just seeing if I missed anything here. Bishop takes f7, bishop takes f7. Uh, were you guys talking about bishop takes f7 in one of the th this position here? Oh, sorry, uh, h6 is forced. Uh, where's bishop takes h7, uh, f7? Very start. Uh, here, bishop takes f7. What's your idea? If it tactically works out, it's quite good. After rook e7, cannot c7, e7. So rook e7, uh, takes, takes. Here, did you want to sack the bishop? I'm just trying to understand what district is asking. They say bishop takes f7. Now you asked what move. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So you're answering, yeah. So we are threatening on the f7 point. Yeah, that's the sensitive square. So f7 is the sensitive square because we already have a bishop putting pressure there. Okay, so let me go on to semi open files. So now my next question to you guys why do we put rooks on semi open files? You can type in the no mic channel. They protect each other. Someone else wants to answer? They open later. That's a decent answer because they can become open. Minimize the squares they control, more scope. Most cups a good answer. I like that answer. So I like to summarize it. Um, I like the answer more scope. So I usually summarize it like this. We put rooks on open files to create tactical opportunities. So because there's pawns down the file, there might be pieces. Um, there's stuff for us to target. So we put the rook on the semi open file. It gets more scope. And later on, it can create tactical opportunities for us. Uh, that's how I like to summarize it, because then we know why we put in a rook there. 
It's for chances to happen. So in this position, there's quite a nice tactical opportunity. Uh, before I show the move, what would you guys play here? It's black to move. Yeah, black to move. Rook c3. Okay, so I'm going to show what happens with rook c3. When we play rook c3, white does not take the rook. White plays the in-between move, bishop takes g7. If we retreat the rook, he trades queens and then grabs our rook. If we grab the bishop, then he takes with the queen. If we take on a2, he plays b3. His queen defends the squares. Our attack sort of stops now. Rook c8, queen b2. So yeah, so it's correct. The correct move was to take on h6 first. Distract the queen away from uh, c3, so he doesn't have an in-between move, and he can't take back on c3 with a queen. And then play rook takes c3. b takes c3, and now there's several ways to continue the attack, but um, a nice way to show, because this is a rook on semi open files, to bring another rook. Uh, there's no way to defend this e3 pawn. I think the suggested move by the engine is rook queen e3. Now we can go rook c3, queen e2, and there's several ways to win now. Nice easy way, queen a3 check, king b1. And now we can take everything on the e3, uh, f3 pawn, because we're in between move. So, now he cannot take with the the, que the knight here because we play an in between knight takes e4 and uh, knight c3 check is very deadly. So say he takes with the knight, we take here, and now this check on this square is going to be very deadly. So um, after we take here, he must uh, move the queen back, and then we can take the pawn. He has to trade queens because the check uh, again on c3 was quite deadly. And now we have a good couple pawns for an exchange, and black should uh, head on to win this game quite easily. We're still threatening all the forks. Okay, so this is just one example. Let me show you guys the next one. We put rooks on semi-open files to create tactical opportunities. So I'm going to show you another one. So this one's actually from one of my games. Uh, what would you guys do here? Remember to post your questions in the NoMic channel. Um, it's in the study. If you guys can't see the study, I'll share it again. NoMic channel. There's more people coming in and out, so I just share it again. Rook e8. Okay, rook e8 to pressure the pawn. Makes sense. Anyone else have any other suggestions? Take the knight. Okay. He takes back with the bishop. Not 100% certain what your idea is there. Anyone else? Rook b2. Rook b2 is interesting, but what's your follow up? We check, he comes back. Probably comes to here so you can put a rook on the file. Okay, uh, bishop d4 is a very strong move. It's actually the best move in the position because of the threat of taking there and then bringing the queen up. Is you move the queen up, bishop away from the queen. It's a very strong move. The move I play is also very strong. I play bishop a3. Uh, if he takes, then I take back its checkmate, so he can't take. And he also can't defend the pawn. Uh, if he goes something like this, I can probably take it and bring my queen here. And he can't defend the knight. Bring the bishop here, I just take. The knight's going to be lost, and my attack continues. Uh, bishop d4 is also a very strong move, because now I bring my queen to support my with my rook. So, remember what I said? We put rooks on semi-open files to create tactical opportunities. Okay, so the next one shows another way to activate the rook. So, this is an example of something called the rook lift. So, sometimes the center is closed, or sometimes our rook can't use the semi-open file how we want. So when there aren't pawns here, or say 
say this pawn was in here and this pawn was back here and we played a5 and rook a6 can go across the whole file. But now um, the move played is the rook left rook e6 so he can bring it over and start attacking the king side. I'll just show the continuation of this game because it's quite interesting. Uh, rook f1, rook h6. So now we found our target on h7. We have a threat already of bishop h7, queen h5. g3 was played. Queen f6 played. Now we have a threat of. I remember. I think the threat was knight takes knight takes f7, and then rook takes here because there'll be a pin on the on the uh, knight. So we wanted to take on f. 2 and then take on h2 because there's a pin on the knight. So rook f1 was played to protect that and prevent the threat. Queen f5 was played. Now the game finished with uh, white taking here. Uh, queen takes d5 and then a tactical sequence was played out. The best move here... Um, okay, maybe I, maybe I can just ask you guys. Uh, black to play, what would you do? This is actually a puzzle, can count, but there's two winning sequences, so either one I'm fine with. You guys find it? If you guys uh, can't follow what I'm talking about, I'll share the study again. Remember to post your questions in the No Mic channel. I don't see as many of the higher rated people asking questions. Excess, sure. This one would be more instructive. Queen h3, okay, so Queen h3, although it's trying to continue the attack. Um, what is your idea? Say I take your knight. If you move your knight to create a discovery on the piece here. I have this in-between move knight here. If you take, I can take with the bishop. If you take there, I can take your queen. If you take here, I can bring my knight out. And I've saved the material. It is interesting though. Um, I'll just show you the other winning line, not the game, so you guys can see. So a very good move knight here, with a similar idea to queen h3. Uh, but now it's more forcing, because we're going to take the right away without the defensive knight e4. So, queen b7, knight f3 check, bishop takes f3, now queen h3. Now there's no, there's no knight g4, so there's sort of no way to stop the mate anymore. We can take here, we bring the bishop back. Can stop the, the file for a second. Can sack his queen because he has to delay the checkmate. But now the mate can't be stopped anymore. It's going to be mate. So knight e5 is a very strong move. Uh, it doesn't allow that defensive move that I showed you. Knight g4, knight g5. But uh, how the game finished was also quite. A, it's quite a pretty move. So that so what was played was knight takes c3. Leaving the queen hanging. It's a queen sack. Just give it a second so you guys can see. So he took the queen. Knight takes e2 check. Forcing the king to come along this diagonal. King g2. So he took with one of the knights. I don't really think it makes a difference, but he took with this one. The pin, uh, so yeah, sorry. You have to take with the C knight, so it creates the pin with the bishop. Takes, takes, and now the queen's attack. So it sort of has to move, and there's a pin on the knight, so you can't take my knight. And then we take on f3, and now you have to sack the queen. If you move the king away, then I check you, and you have to sack the queen. But now you don't get um, two pieces for it, so you have to sack the queen here. Takes, takes, and black is two pawns up, and went on to win the game. Uh, knight takes d4 could work. Let me just... Uh, knight takes d4 here instead. 
Okay, but now we'll just uh, continue with the attack. See, we play here. Discovery on the knight. If you take back with the knight, then the mate's going to be strong. You come in, then we can go here. We're going to check. We're going to go on h7. The attack's going to be quite strong. The threat of this and then playing something to remove the knight is the threat for the next move. So either it takes you and it works or it doesn't work. That's how the game finished. So uh, the idea of this is the rook lift. Okay, so now I'm just going to summarize the rooks so you guys get the idea. We go on open files to in infiltrate down the open files to look for targets. And this example was f7, this example was c3, and then we play a5 here to expand. Uh, there's no specific targets here, but um, this is the only move so our rook will have scope later in the game, a5. And then we put rooks on semi-open files to create tactical opportunities for us. And then we do the rook lift uh, so we can choose which file we want to utilize for the rooks. Find targets this way around. I think a uh, famous streamer or YouTuber calls it the rover, rook up and over. Okay, so now I'm going to show this position. And I want to ask you guys, what makes a knight good? Okay, there's quite a few people still wanting to type, I see. Knights are good in close positions. Yes, uh, that's true, outpost. Okay, so I'll just start uh, answer the question. So a knight is good when it's on a supported forward post. Now, the reason I'm not using the word outpost like you guys are using is because we don't always get an outpost. So the next example will show where the knight moves to a square where it can be kicked away, but to kick it away, the opponent has to create a weakness on their side of the board. So we want our knight on the most forward supported post we can. When our knight's on a forward post, this is an outpost because now it cannot be kicked by a pawn. So it's the best forward post we can get, outpost. Our knight is putting pressure on our opponent's side of the board. So our knight has four squares of influence on our opponent's side of the board. Uh, what I call influence is, so I'll explain it briefly to you guys. So we got two sides of the board. We got our side, white side, and we got the black side. So when we have influence, this means we have pressure on our squares on our opponent's side. The screen has influence on that square. Uh, this one has influence on these squares. But which, which piece of ours has the most influence? It's the knight. Our knight has influence on four squares on our opponent's side of the board. So it's one of our better pieces. Um, Killer Queen is trying to say something. Okay, I'm just going to move on. It's fine. If I see a question, I'll come back to it. Okay, so we know what makes a knight good. What makes a knight bad? You guys can answer now. On the edge, yeah. So, okay, let me let me ask this question in a slightly different way. So, not what makes a knight bad, um, but how do you play against your opponent's knight? So, you know your opponent knight wants to go to forward post, but how do you play against it?
Yeah, so LC0, that's the closest correct answer. So I'm going to go to the next position so you guys can understand it. So to make a knight bad, we take away its forward posts. So if we compare the g7 bishop here, which has a nice long diagonal, to the knight on g3, you can see all its forward squares it wants to move to are controlled at the moment. So its forward posts are taken away. So now I'm going to continue this game because I'm going to try to improve the knight um, to a better square. So now, when we have pieces that we don't like, like the knight here on g3, we must always imagine ourselves getting into a better square. So we know that what makes a knight good is a forward post. So now, if you could mentally imagine this knight going anywhere on the whole board, where would you want the knight? Remember, when I say anywhere on the whole board, you must imagine the pawn structure says the same. So if you say you want your knight here, the knight's just going to be captured. So where would you want this knight to go? e5, e5 is a very good answer, yes. c5, c5 is a good answer. Okay, so both, so you guys said two squares, you guys e5, c5. What square connects these two points? d3. Yes, so now we work backwards. What is the knight route to get to d3? How can the knight from g3 get to d3? Okay, yes, I like uh, silver by its answer. That's more accurate. So knight c1, knight d3. I don't like really coming from this f4 point because when our knight lands on f4, um, black might be able to play bishop h6. So a much safer way is e2, c1, d3, and then we can go to e5 or c5. Sorry, uh, let's correct the arrows again. So then we can go to these two points. So um, let's continue. I'm not going to play the base moves from black because um, the base moves is the b5, and then we continue with the minority attack. So I'm just going to play moves to improve for black. So rook c8, knight e2. B8. Okay, now I'm going to stop here. What would you guys do next for white? Anyone else? I only see art with an answer. A4, I actually like the move A4 for different reasons. A4 is a very good move, but uh, not the reasons for this uh, position. Yeah, A4 is a very good move, I agree. So actually, let's play the move A4, A6. But, uh, let's just get that out of the way. So I want to know here what you guys do. So, I don't want to focus on the queen side because I'm not playing the base moves for black. So I'm just going to play A4, A6. Now what you do. Remember, if it's uncomfortable to type, you can ping me and then uh, I mean, you can unmute yourself for a minute if you don't like typing. Okay, so no one else was pointing anything else, so the only move suggests knight c1. Okay, so when white plays knight c1 here, yeah, remember earlier you guys said the knight on the edge of the board is bad? Well, we've put our knight here on the back file. This is, uh, this is quite a bad place. And now black takes advantage of it with this move e5. He's threatening to take here and then start putting pressure on that point very quickly. So we sort of have to take. And then he takes here, threatening the pawn. Go h3. And then he plays this move d4. This is the key moment he can play d4. He takes, he takes with the queen, 
takes queen, it takes bishop. What do you think of our opponent's bishop? What do you think of black's position? Yeah, so black's position is better. And now this is because we play at knight c1. So if we go back, just a moment, black couldn't really play e5 here. Uh, uh, let's say e5 here. When they go e5 here, the difference is we already have a knight controlling the square. So it's more difficult to get in the move d4. But when we put the knight to c1, now our knight's out of the action and uh, black strikes in the center quickly. So in this position, I wanted you guys to play f4. I thought you guys said earlier you like, you think knights are strong in closed positions. So now we play f4, we keep the center more closed, and then we continue with our knight's route. When the center is closed, there's not these quick e5 breaks. So f4, like you guys said, knights are strong in closed positions. f4 to prevent e5. Okay, let's continue. Rook c7, knight c1, rook c8, knight d3. And now he plays b6. So he's denied us the home on c5 that we wanted. And now we come to e5. Now, this is not an outpost because he can kick our knight with f6. But the moment he kicks our knight, he has to create a weakness on e6, which we can start attacking. But this is a knight on a forward post, supported forward post. So what do you think of the knight in this position compared to the knight in this position? Which one do you like more? Yeah, of course you guys like the knight on e5. Let's put in influence again on four squares in our opponent's side of the position. And this is also what you guys must look to do in the middle game. It's quite an important thing. So I'm showing you in this example, but we must look to either A, improve our piece that we find is bad. Like we see this, um, uh, the knight was quite bad on g3. If you look at the previous chapter on rooks, when we didn't play that move a5, oh, let me just go back there so you guys can see again. When we didn't, uh, not this one, sorry. Yeah, when we didn't play the move a5, the scope of our rook on a1 uh, is hammered down on. And then uh, it's hard for us to open files. Harder for us to open files. So in a position, you must always look to do what your pieces want. So your knight wants a forward post. Get a forward post for your knight. Your rooks want open files. Find a, a route to put your rooks on the open files to put pressure. Okay, so yeah, so if you have a worse piece, always see what you can do to either either improve it or B, trade off your worst piece for the better piece. So another thing to understand about knights, that's why I got two more, uh, two more chapters here on knights, it's knights are short range pieces. By that I mean is you normally put your knight on the side of the board where you're gonna be playing. So let me show, Normally in the center, oh sorry, in the opening, uh, we bring our knights to f3, to c3, or d2 depending, c6, f6. Now we do this because the action is now in the center and our knights are putting pressure in the center. But if I go to, uh, let's go to the next one, this position, the center is more locked down. So the action is now no longer in the center necessarily. So where where is the action for white normally um you play on the side of the board you have more space so where is the action for white the king's side yes so thanks to the furthest advanced f5 pawn the action is now on the king's side what do you think of this move knight d5 
good, bad, nice. You like the idea? What, what do you think of the move? Someone says it's a good move. Yeah, so I agree with Sid, I agree with LC0. Knight d5 is not a good move. Um, because our knights are short range pieces, you bring your knight to the side of the board, you have more space. So knight d5 plays in the center, but your more space is on the king side. And like LC0 said, um, black's going to play c6. It kicks away our knight. A square we do want our knight is on the king side. So knight e2, knight g3, queen g4, knight h5. We bring the knight to the side of the board. We have more space, and that's where the action takes place. Yes, a knight is not the best move here, but it's just the side of the board you must bring your knight to. You have to bring your knight to the king side, because that's the side of the board you have more space. You bring your knights to the side of the board you are playing, because your knights are such short range pieces, uh, if you play on the other side of the board, say knight d5, c6, knight here, d5 can't be played right away because we control it. But um, now our black side uh, gets to continue with their counterplay quite quickly. They want to aim for d5 still. So we only helped our knight, our opponent, by playing knight d5 because we don't want to trade this bishop off. Uh, but I'll show that I'll show that just now because this is not the bishop chapter. Um, we want to bring our knights to the side of the board. We have more space. Okay, so this should make it quite obvious. But what makes bishops good? Okay, pinning pieces, bit of a strange answer. So people said long scope, long range in the diagonal, open position. Open position, I like the most for the answer. So yeah, so this position is open because the, all the central pawns are gone. And so the bishops do very nicely in open positions because now they can use their long range to their advantage. Um, there's something else, but I'm not going to cover it in this lecture, but important thing to understand is what bishops is the color squares that you control um that's more based on the pawn structure so i'm going to explain that if i do another lecture but i'm just going to show you the raw power of the bishops in the open position here so uh let's play c4 kicking the knight somewhere 97 we could take here and just win a pawn but uh we have two bishops let's have more fun Bishop b5 attacking the queen. Queen a5. Bishop c3 attacking the queen. We can't take this bishop because there's a discover check winning the queen. Queen c5. And now we take here. But now we also sack a rook. And then we give a check. And we go queen f5. And mate's unstoppable. So I just briefly showed in combination just to show the power of the two bishops for the strong force in attack. Well, if long open diagonals make the bishops good, what makes the bishop bad? Closed positions is a decent answer. Let's see. Pawns of the same color, I like that answer. Okay, so yeah, let's go to the next position. So this should make it obvious because we've already looked at this, but do you like white's bishop or black's bishop more? Yeah, so of course we like white's bishop more because white's bishop has much more scope. 
compared to Black's Bishop. So, but now we um, remember the previous chapters with knights, rooks. If we have a bad piece, we must look to improve it. I'm going to play the bad move that was played in the previous chapter. Knight d5, c6, knight c3. You guys don't like your bishop here. What will you do to improve it? On e7, what do you improve? How do you improve your bishop? Prepare d5. Okay. Any other answers? Um, Mark, please post your answer in the no mic channel. Don't DM me directly. Uh, I don't want to click too many places away, just to make it easier for me. Okay, so bishop d8, I, I like that answer. So our bishop was bad, because all the pawns here were on the same color. Like you guys said, and it's behind our pawn chains. The scope's more limited. So after knight d5, c6, knight c3, bishop d8, now we plan to bring our knight outside the pawn chain and also trade it off for that nice bishop in e3. So like I, um, like I said in the previous chapters, if you have a bad piece, look to either improve it or trade it off for your opponent's um, other piece, which is better. So our opponent's bishop is good, so here we look to trade it off or put our bishop on a much nicer diagonal. Similar to what I said about the knights, our knight's scope is limited or it's forward post to take away. So now we find another route to put our knight on a forward post. Those are the knights. Okay, so I've covered rooks, I've covered knights, I've covered bishops. So I'm not going to cover pawns because that's pawn structure, but I'm going to cover queens. Uh, sorry, someone said here yeah, rook f8, bishop f8. Okay, sorry. Um, I just want to show this quickly because someone mentioned it. So they say rook f8, bishop f8. I don't think the bishop has more scope on f8 compared to e7. So I think bishop d8, bishop b6 is a much better idea. But um, rook f8 makes a bit more sense, but because we prepare d5, well, uh, it's a decent move, but um, a nicer move just to bring out the bishop trade off. A rook fd8 is a good strategy as well because we want to play d5 and give our bishop more scope. Okay, so now we're going to cover queens. So if you see the chapter says uh, she cannot fight alone. So your queens, um, I'll explain in the next chapter. Um, someone DM me. Uh, please don't DM me directly. Please post in the no mic channel. I'll share the study again if you guys join now. In the mic channel, there's the study. Click there. Make sure you are synced with me and rec click on the rec. There's two ticks there. It should be more green. And then just post questions in no mic. Uh, DM is a bit distracting because now I have to click away to a DM. It's easier for me to look in the no mic channel. Uh, please, um, please post questions in no mic channel. I'm getting direct DMs from your boy on my channel. And I am not uh, one of the admins on the server. I'm just doing this course. So you can't, I can't, uh, can't apply stuff with me. Okay, I'm gonna, okay, so I'm gonna proceed, yeah? So this is an over exaggerated, over exaggerated example of why queens cannot fight alone in the middle game. So we trade it on d5, knight c3 to hit the queen. So this is the Scandinavian, and if we bring back the queen to a square where it cannot be attacked, uh, then it will be a logical continuation. But I'm just going to show if uh, that if we try to fight squares alone with the queen, then we just allow our opponent to develop all their pieces. While we are playing with minimal pieces, uh, while our opponent is developing all our pieces, our queen's getting attacked around because we can't trade it for the less valuable pieces. So that makes it obvious our queen can't attack alone because it's too valuable. But what makes a queen good? 
What would you game say makes the queen good? Yep. It can go anywhere. That's a bit of a strange answer. But I like uh, always plays F6 answer when it coordinates with the other pieces. Give you guys a second to answer. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna continue here so you guys can understand. Um your boy, maybe you can direct those questions after the lecture. I prefer to be questions for the study. Should be, shouldn't be too much longer. Uh, Queens is the last chapter, so ask questions related to if you want to be a mod or chess help or later. Okay, so playing with the queen alone makes uh, is not what we want to do with the queen. So the queen is what I would define as the best supporting piece of the game. So now I'm going to ask you a simple question: White or black queen? Which one do you like better, and why? Okay, so let me read what everyone said, and then I'll explain further. So let's see. Uh, whites, uh, free of movement, not pinned. White, ideas of bishop h6 and trade. Uh, white, controls more squares, cannot trade off the bishops. Both look the same to me. I don't know why I said can't evaluate pieces. Um, always plays f6, says white, because it covers more squares, while blacks is trapped in. That's a decent answer for always f6. Uh, because it's not vulnerable like blacks. And please use a different channel, your boy. Oh, yes. So I agree with my, uh, most of the statements. So white's queen is better. The queen is forming two batteries, a battery with the rook over here and a battery with the bishop. It's also pointed to support the bishop, which is on the king's side. Uh, remember what I said earlier, you put your pieces to the side of the board you are playing. If you notice, both knights are here, this bishop's here, this bishop's pointing here, this queen can point here. All our pieces are aimed towards the king's side. So we support a king's side attack. So our queen is supporting our endeavors on the king's side attack. Black's uh, queen is not supporting their pieces, more hindering their pieces. They put their own knight in a pin. And um, there's no real scope for the queen. So now I'm going to continue with the move, very strong move. H5. So um, H5 now opens lines on the queen side. Because now we are giving our rook more scope. So we attach to the g6 pawn so we can open the h file. Okay, so black plays this move rook b8. The reason black plays rook b8 is because we've played this move a3, which allows black to try to play b5, b4, and trade on a3 to give his rook an open file. So now we play this move. Okay, before I play the next move, uh, what would you guys do as white to continue? Say taking here is a bit too soon, but okay. H6, H6 is a decent move, but uh, we want to have the option to open the file, so I wouldn't play h6. Bishop h6 removes our bishop from the pin on the knight. We really want to go bishop h6. Okay. 
maybe some of the stronger players can also say because uh, it gets a bit harder on the next few chapters. So I'll see zero or someone. E5. E5 is actually a decent idea. But the problem with E5, let's say he takes, is um, our queen and rook are here. And um, what's our next move? There's no discovery with the bishop, because he takes our bishop. We just trade on d8. Move our queen, he moves his queen. Queen c3. You want to put the queen opposite the bishop. E5 is a good idea, and it does come in later, but um, it's not yet. Okay, Sid found the best move. Queen F4, that's the best move. Well done, Sid. So what Queen F4 does, it puts more pressure on the knight. Number one, when your opponent has a pin piece, put more pressure on their pin piece. It's an important concept to understand. Number two, now that our queen's away from the default, this E5 idea that was mentioned is much stronger. Because you'll see it opens the file and can gain a discovered attack with the bishop. So let's continue. B5. We want to attack on the king side. So what what do you guys do next? Your white. Continue with your plan. Okay. H times G6. Still a bit too soon, but queen h4 right away is good. So now we have pressure along the diagonal, making it a bit more tough to get out of this pin. So we can't move the queen away. And also now uh, we have a battery on h4. We are threatening in some positions to take and take on f6. Black doesn't want to continue the attack because it's looking quite scary with this e5 move. Um, just trying to see here. So black tries this move 95 to try to close the f file, uh, the e file, because uh, if e5 came, it might have been a bit scary. Because let's say we play a move like a6, e5 might come. If we take this way, there's discoveries with the bishop attacking the rook. If we take with the um, uh, if we take with the knight, we can take back, and then again there's discoveries with the bishop. If we ignore it, our knight is pinned and it's going to be lost. So black tries this move 95 to try to lock down their file. So now uh, let's take that knight, and then let's trade on. Hold on, uh, so I'm going to try to remember this. Yeah, let's take the knight, and then we can trade on this square. Okay. Mm. Trying to remember this correctly. Yeah, okay. So now what do you guys do? Six. So although this is a good idea, after this move, you're lo you've lost all your advantage. So bishop takes f6, queen takes h7, king f7. Now you've won a pawn, but your attack has stopped, number one. And number two, now you've given your opponent something called the bishop pair. So your opponent now has two bishops, and they're now going to start opening this side of the board and use their bishop pair. So bishop takes f6 would be a mistake. If you check stockfish, stockfish will go from plus 5 to plus 0.2. Advantage went out the window for one pawn. A good move is f4. Just continue. Now we threaten to take on e5 and attack the pin piece. It's your opponent has a pin piece. Put more pressure on it. Attack it. There's also nothing... Uh, black and so black has to get out of this pin 
rook e8. We can take on e5, but a very strong move here is f5. So the bishop moves away. Now we can take on h f6. There's a bit of a difference here. Uh, before our opponent, we couldn't continue the attack. And now we get to continue the attack. So rook f6, take h7, king f8. If he takes on g6, uh, we have several moves, but just bring the queen back, say so h4, and we're going to bring knight f4 next. Uh, the difference between this position is now this king is very open. Um, if I go back to the other one, where you trade it here, the king, because of this g6 pawn, is quite protected, and we can't really continue the attack. Can't really go f4, can't really bring our rook in, can't really bring our knight in. And now if we go to this position where we had f4, f5 in, now we can bring our rook in, we can bring our knight in, and we can continue the attack. Okay, so I just want to see the original, because this is not how the original one went, so I'm just double checking this. So the original one went, okay, so yeah, it did, it did do this move, so I just want to double check this. Uh, the senior, oh, okay, he has the original one. Okay, yeah, sorry, sorry, uh, okay, I got it now. I was just trying to find how the original one went. So, here. Uh, instead of taking on e5, taking on g6 is actually now a good move. So he shouldn't take with this pawn because now we can take on f7, mate h7. If he takes this pawn, this will work out. So he has to take with either the knight or the f pawn. So he sort of has to take with the knight. And now I just want to see how this continues. Because the knight didn't come to e5. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, the original line had rook e8, not, not, uh, not uh, knight e5. It's uh, rook e8 is another idea to stop this e5 break. So instead of knight e5, rook e8 was in the original one. I was just looking for that. So it takes, f takes, and then let's try and just see it here. Yeah, f takes, and then uh, after queen h4, I'm just checking it. Okay, okay, so yeah, in the original one, b5 wasn't played, because b5 is not a good move. Rook e8 was played. And now we take here, and then queen h4. Uh, bishop f7 is played to delay this e5 break. And here... Yeah, this was actually the, the position that I actually wanted to show you guys. I was just covering the B5 line, but this is more important. So what would you guys play here as white? Yeah, so from this position, so instead of B5, the move rookie needs played. And then we take on G6, and then we go queen h4, pressure the knight. And then bishop f7 is played uh, to delay this e5, because now the rook involved as well. E4 doesn't seem like a legal move because there's already a pawn there, but E5 is correct. So the idea of E5 is to trade off on E5 and then push our F pawn. So if he takes with the uh, ever with the pawn, we have discovered attacks. He has to take with the knight. So we take on the knight, and yesterday with the rook, he can't take with the pawn again. There's discovered attacks, and we play. Oops, sorry. Let's take with the rook, and we play this F4 move. So we can play F5 and break through on g6, and we also have this f file. So he brings the rook back. I should see where I brought the rook back to in the line. 
Okay, yeah, came back all the way. So e8, f5. So I'm um, now the threat is to take on g6 and put a rook on f5, and then the knight can't be protected. It's going to be lost. So the line, the engine suggests the line is rook e5 here, so that when we take, we can. Uh, should I see? Um, just see the line. Yeah. So we so rook e5. So that when we take, takes back. Um, he can have the option of sacking the rook. So when we put more pressure on the knight, um, he can sack the rook. If he didn't play rook e5, so he played a different move. Then after we take on g6, we go rook f1. It's uh, more uncomfortable to now defend the knight. So he defends the knight. We can trade on g6. Take f7, uh, f6, check. And then we, our other knight comes in to continue the attack. Okay. Anyways, I was just showing you guys a couple continuations for attacking in this position, but h5 is a good start. So the idea here is that your queen is the best supporting piece. So you use your queen with the rest of your pieces to create your plans. Okay, um, before I continue to the next one, you guys have any questions on the pieces? Quite a few people are left and joined, so I don't know if the same group's always been here. Like uh, Nancy has left already, although she asked the question. Okay, I'm gonna proceed, it's fine. Okay, so this position I've already shown with the bishops uh, for worse bishops, but I just wanna briefly explain something regarding pawns and piece evaluation. So I'm just gonna give you a couple of words that I explain. So scope, scope is the range of a piece that it can move to basically without being captured. So this bishop here has a longer scope than the bishop here. Influence, if you guys heard me say that before, is the amount of squares on the opponent's side of the board we are putting pressure on. So that bishop has pressure on five squares on the opponent's side of the board. Uh, these two concepts are quite important to understand because you improve your position by improving the amount of influence it has and the amount of scope it has. When a piece has less scope, it's... Um, usually less valuable in the position. Okay, um, yeah, and then I already explained that you play on the side of the board, you have more space. Now I'm gonna give you guys a test. Uh, let me flip the board here. So black should be at the bottom for you guys, hopefully. If black's not at the bottom, uh, just click on the three arrow, the three lines there, and just make black at the bottom. I can stream just to show you as well. Okay, so this is a very, this is a more difficult position, so it should be more for the higher levels, but it's black to play here. I don't want you guys to come up with lines. I want you guys to evaluate the pieces. So what I do with people here, I'm going to highlight a piece at a time, and you tell me which one is better than the other piece and why. So I'm going to highlight a rook, and I'm going to highlight a rook, and you say, is it black rooks better or is white rook better? What do, you guys, what do you guys think? Why is white rooks better? So you need to give me more than I say this color, but tell me why. Technically, both rooks can move to semi-open files. None of the rooks are on semi-open files. White rook on it? No, no, those are not semi-open files because they're behind the pawns.
Okay, I'm gonna answer later. I just want to hear what you guys say. So don't worry about it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna say, assume you guys analyze both rooks. So when I highlighted that rook, you assume this one as well. You guys say white, black. Because I, I got mixed answers. So Sid said black, uh, always said white. LC0 just said centralized. I don't think LC0 said a color. Zero's answer is quite incorrect because always play zero says white because you can rook lift potentially. Oops, uh, I'll see zero did not say a color. That's what he said now. Uh, g give me a color, I'll see zero. Say white or black. It's just a color. Can't be wrong. That's just, just a color. <laughs> no, no, there's only two options. There's no third option. Okay, so you'll say blank. A new value within the rooks here. Okay, so I'm just gonna explain here why someone's answer is wrong because someone said I like white rook because it can do a rook lift, which is uh, not the answer I want to hear from you guys. So I'm gonna go back to the rook lift chapter just for one second. So if you look at this position, when the rook went up and over, it started pressurizing pawns and using other file on the board. So if I go right back to the chapter we're on, uh, make sure I flip the board so black is at the bottom. If the rook comes up, where is it going over to find a file at all? Do you guys see how the rook comes up and over to start using files? The rook doesn't really use files because there's the g3 pawn in the way, knight's in the way, pawn's in the way. If this pawn wasn't here, black could maybe do that, bring the rook up and over for a cliff. But um, this is not a structure where white can be white can really do that. Because there's pawns here. We only bring the rook over when the pawns are not in the way, and then we can utilize the file. Just so you can understand what a rook cliff is for, because that answer was not correct. Just to answer always play zero briefly. Okay, um, so, okay, now I just want to highlight the next piece. So the bishops, because this is a more difficult question. A white or black bishop? And remember, guys, I don't want you to look at lines. It's just evaluate the pieces. So I don't analyze, play this move, this happens. Just evaluate the position. And remember to give reason. So you say, I like white's bishop because this pe two people said white now, but no one, I want to, what's the reason? Uh, please post your question in no mic channel, not in DM me. Please put awesome if you're in the voice channel, in the no mic channel, post your answer. Just post there because I'm reading the, what people say in the no mic channel. Um, oh, Master, yeah, sorry, he was asking. I didn't actually check the lecture. Just in the no mic channel. Oh, let me ping, uh, ping Max because Max is confused. That's on the stream here. I'm just going to give Max a second to answer. I think they are the same. Okay, no. Uh, White's bishop. Uh, okay, so I'm going to answer the question. My answer is Black's bishop. I'm going to explain now. So 
I said don't analyze moves, but you still need to look at the diagonals on the board. So this is quite an open diagonal when our bishop comes here. But uh, I'm going to give you the scope of the pieces as well. This bishop, the center of pawns are on the same color. When you have pawns in the same color, it limits the scope of that piece. If we count the amount of squares the bishop can even go to, it's two. And even if we put it on d3, then it just comes back here. This bishop is much worse than this bishop. If you look at the scope of that diagonal compared to any scope this bishop can go to, the black bishop should be better. Do you guys disagree with me? I can go to e2 and then I count one square of influence and a range of three, four squares. I still think this is longer. Um, or it says white cannot get cannot get on the h3 c7 diagonal. You see, yeah, this bishop cannot really get here because there's uh, this knight also controlling the square. Okay, so now probably the easiest one for you guys: knights, white or black. Just reading the answers when people post. I'm just um, reading all questions just because someone's recording. So odd1998 says black has quite some influence on white's half to the white knight. Black's knight, of course, says Sid. Coast and Max are typing. Let me give him a chance. I'll see zero. Um, it's probably obvious for him, so it's fine. He doesn't have to answer. Okay, so I got two answers, so it should be fine. You guys are probably going to all say that the Black Knight's better, which I agree with. So yeah, so the Black Knight has influence on... Sorry, let me fix this. On four squares on um, four squares in white's position and this knight uh, like one of the other chapters we went through is being controlled remember to make a knight bad we control all its forward posts so the c3 knight is much worse and it's only putting influence on two squares instead of four Okay, so the last piece, the queens, white or black, and why? Um, Max also answered now, black's knight because it has a lot more influence and has a nice position that would take white multiple squares to move it. Yeah, Max, that's correct, basically what I tried to explain. So now the queen. White's queen is more centralized. Decent answer. Queens both look the same to me, says Sid. Black's queen, as it has better coordination with its pieces, says Ghost. White's queen is not blockaded by the pawn, pawn wall. It has more influence on the board, says Rookwood. Okay, so looks like uh, we have the group that's on soon. Black screen can't jump too many squares useful. Yeah, so I agree with you. The white queen is better. 
So the white queen has more influence on black side of the board. The white queen is um, quite a forward post and it's also sort of supporting the rest of its army. Supporting the, the rooks. The rooks come out and it can potentially support the bishop. Okay, so now we haven't looked at moves. All we've done is we've evaluated the pieces. So now, based on our evaluation, I want you to guys say, um, so now you must ask yourself questions like this based on your evaluation. What do I like about my position? I like my knight. My knight's on a central post, supported, putting pressure on our opponent. I like my bishop has diagonal here. And I like that um, on my knight, if my knight doesn't get kicked, I'm going to like it a lot. And then you ask yourself, what do you like about your opponent that you want to take away from him? So you say, okay, I like my opponent's queen. My opponent's queen's too active. I want to, the queen to go away and I want to make my queen more active. So, so you must, so you ask this other question. So I want to keep my advantages. I want to take away my opponent's advantages and keep improving my position. So, so I'm going to play a bad move from black so I can show you, uh, show you how this can go wrong for black. So black takes on g3. Oh, welcome. I can't keep track of how many people yet. I'm just going to repost the study questions, answers, and no mic. Be brief. Okay, so, uh, oh, sorry, my mic's a bit close. So, so we take on g3, take on g3. So we play a rook move. I'm just going to play a new rook move. And now we play this move f4. Knight g6, e5. So now what black has done, what white has done, is white's achieved the goal. So white's taken away what he uh, didn't like about, what he liked about our position, the knight. So he's kicked our knight out of the center. He's taken away these pawns um, that were sort of locked, and now he's pushed them. So he's pushed his central mm -hmm. pawns. He's going to open now files for his rooks, or he's going to push the pawns further down the board. And now this bishop and this knight, which didn't have scope before, now after the bishop comes to d3, it has a very nice diagonal. The knight comes to e4. The knight has a lot of pressure on our side of the board. I so said we take, take, and he's gonna push these pawns further down. These rooks are quite active. So would you say you like white or black here more? Yeah, so you like white's position more. I agree, all these pieces are now coming to life. So in the initial position, you must understand what your opponent wants to do. You understand, okay, I like this piece, I don't like this piece, I like that piece. But now you must understand, okay, what will my opponent try to do to best utilize the advantages in his position and try to make my position worse? So we understand white doesn't like our knight on e5, he wants to play the f4 move to kick our knight and then play e5 and activate these pieces. So now that we know his plan, after we evaluated the position and after we've um, determined what we like and dislike, what would you guys do here as black? B4. Okay. This thing says B4. I just want to see this B4 open. B4 will open the B or C file, depending on what white does. Interesting. Any other ideas? All of you can say, because this is quite important. 
g5. Interesting. It's quite a difficult position, so I would prefer even the stronger people to try to answer. I'll see zero. What would you do here? This is a position out of a puzzle book for high rated players. It's black to play, uh, knight g3. I don't know how you do that. You probably meant knight g6, which is interesting. It says odd. Ninety-six. I just want to, before I show what's going to be playing, I want to what I'll see is zero says. I'll see e zero because he's currently the strongest one in the call. Uh, queen f6 says max. You want to double your pawns. Queen f6 also loses a pawn because you can take there, but okay. Okay, so I'm going to continue. It's fine. So Sid was correct. The move is g5. So the idea of g5 is we want to prevent our opponent from playing f4. So we're going to control this f4 square. So the uh, number two, this g5 move also does the second thing we're trying to do. Remember we said we dislike that our opponent has such an active queen. So now we kick the queen away. The, the queen cannot come forward because the queen will be trapped after bishop c8. Trapped queen. So we kick the queen out of the center. And now we take on g3. You can take back with the queen or the pawn. If he takes back with the pawn, now that we're never going to get hit with f4. Our knight's staying on e5 for the rest of the game. So he takes back with the queen with the idea of playing f4. Now we play this move, queen f6, simply controlling the f5, f4 square. And we have stopped our opponent's plan. So this is how planning works. So I'll go back to the start. We evaluated the position. We determined what we liked about our position. We thought what our opponent's going to do. Then we thought what we can do to prevent his goals and continue improving our position. Our opponent wants f4, so we play g5, took on g3, queen f6, and we've stopped f4. So now you guys might be asking, what if knight e2? Who was wondering that? No one? I assume no one was wondering if ninety two. Um okay, so if no one is wondering, so what if he goes this queen e three move? The idea is he's gonna go g three f four. Well we can ignore it. King g seven. So we play king g seven so we can move our rook to the open file. See that, that our file is completely open and we can take it first. Okay, uh, so g4 is a good idea. I'm going to show you now. So if he plays g3 with the idea of f4, now we can play a uh, such recommendation g4. There's a rule called on person, so we can take there whenever we want. Um, also, there is a fork here, but I don't want to really trade on knight for that rook. I'll just I'll, I'll keep the. I'll keep our nice knight on e5. It's doing more than that rook. So whenever he goes f4, we can take on person. And we'll just continue. Rook here. Rook up. Rook there. And attack down the file. Um, you can't put too much pressure on this, because now our bishop can come back. Defend that. Um, just to cover here, I said knight e2 for who was thinking. Now we play a very strong move. Queen g6. Knight g6 is also an option, but uh, we want to keep our knight. Our knight's on a nice square. We don't need to move it knight. away from e5. Queen g6 is a very strong move. Queen g6 now stops our opponent from ever hitting the knight away. If he goes f4, we just take. 
If he takes on g6, we take back and we protect our pawn. If he takes on f4, okay, now our knight's standing there. And we can continue improving our position. Takes with the knight, he hangs his queen. Okay, so have any questions? Okay, so you guys probably think the king is very open. I'm not going to get too much into how attack and defense works, but although this seems to make the king more open, when you attack your opponent, you need pieces. So white's pieces are not coming into the game to attack our king. We've stopped f4. f4 is white's break move to bring their pieces into the game. Or white's piece is going to come into the game. Well, if our opponent can start attacking with their pieces. Um, this lecture is not on uh, attacking and defending. I might do that in the future. But um, you need pieces to attack. Pieces are not in the game to attack you. A queen there. And it's difficult to get the rest of the pieces in. My g5 in this position feels like an uncomfortable move. Uh, a lot of people are told, don't move pawns in front of your king. You open up spaces to your king, you get attacked. Although um, that's true, you still need to evaluate the position and come up with a proper plan. Our opponent wants f4. Okay, we stop f4. Now our opponent's pieces can't come into the game. On play four, can't bring his rooks in. The bishop scopes, uh, stays miserable on f1. The knight doesn't have a proper route to get into the game. How how is Black's king? Kernable uh, by now. What's Kernable? Kernable. What word did Art use here? I don't know. I'll just assume he meant why is Black's king crumbling, vulnerable. Okay, he's trying to use vulnerable. This king's not actually vulnerable. If the queen wasn't defending this, maybe, but I mean, we bring our king up, all our pieces are around the king. The king's not, um, although the pawn's on g5, when all your pieces are around your king, your opponent needs more pieces to attack. There's always a simple way to count if your attack goes through. You count the defenders versus the attackers. I'll actually go to the, I'll go to the queen chapter so you guys can see it. Remember when, uh, I just want to go to this one, sorry. Uh, so when we're in a position and we are attacking so this is an example so you guys can see the queen chapter we, a good way to know if your attack is going to go through is to count the attackers versus the defenders so we played this e5 move this brought in another attacker we've got one two three four five six attackers and our attack should go through. We have more attackers than our opponent has defenders. Uh, after they exchanged here, we exchanged one of our attackers, but now we brought in another attacker, this rook. Sorry, took here and then we brought in that rook. So we're attacking with all of our pieces. Pieces. And if we go back to the test position, I'll just put the board again. How is white attacking with their pieces? Although it looks like g5 makes our king more vulnerable, to attack a king, you need your pieces. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the next chapter unless you guys have other questions. Okay, so here's another position. So I, got, I want you guys to do the same thing. Evaluate the position. So you evaluate a piece at a time. So compare the rooks to the rooks, the knights to the knights, 
um, the e7 bishop to the e7 bishop, that one to that one. So just just a brief analysis. I'm not going to highlight the pieces one at a time. I just want to hear what you guys think. Remember, don't look at moves. Just evaluate the position. Compare the pieces. Anyone want to type anything? You can give me an overall evaluation. Black white rook, semi open file, comparison to black rooks, yes. Yeah. Anyone want to comment about the bishops, the knights? I'll give you guys two minutes or five minutes and then just evaluate it. Please post in the mic channel. I don't want to be DM'd. Remember, don't don't look at variations. Just evaluate the position. But um, it's yeah, it's important to understand the break move. D five is important. But uh, we only come up, d5 is like a plan. So before we come up with plans, we evaluate the current position. And our plan is what we do to improve our position. So d5 will be part of the second phase. We play d5, we open the file, we improve our position. So d5 is the second phase, but first we evaluate the position. I would like to improve the e6 bishop. Where's the e6 bishop? Um, I don't see a bishop on e6. There's a pawn on e6. I assume you meant the e7 bishop? Yeah, okay. So it says once you improve the e7 bishop. I like that because you see your pawns are in the same color, so you want to improve it. That's good. Good, good understanding. Okay, yeah, this is an important relationship to understand what uh, LC0 is saying. He said, I think black has nice pressure on white center with a knight and bishop taking e pawn. So this knight is pressurizing this. This knight's defending. So since black is the one pressurizing the center, white's the one defending, um, black's piece has more pressure on white. So it's hard. Sometimes it's more important to defend because you're supporting your center. Sometimes it's more pressure, important to put pressure on it. Um, but it depends on the position. But I would say I like Black's knight slightly more. It's pressurizing the pawn. And this knight is quite controlled. If you see, the g3 knight is white's bad knight, would you say? Because it's forward posts are controlled. E7 bishop because our pawns are on the same color and its scope is limited. So here's a simple question: which bishop, which bishop do you like more? Whites or blacks? Someone can answer white or black. Whites? You like whites, Bishop? Really? Interesting. Black? Oh. It's odd said white, this thing said black. This reverse answers. Black says black.
I didn't say you're wrong, uh, Aunt. I'm just asking. Uh, black because I don't see how whites can break up the black spawn. Yeah. Um, well, that's kind of plan. Okay. This thing says, what happens after Bishop Ace is trying to trade off? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to evaluate this so you guys can understand. So this knight is, of course, uh, about as bad as this bishop, but if the position opens up, this bishop scopes better than the, than the knight on g3. Um, you see white's the only one that has a semi-open file that they can utilize. And then we don't. Um, this bishop, uh, it's quite a nice bishop, has a, a decent scope and it's pressurizing on the center. And this bishop... Its scope, although it looks nice, is actually not that nice. And uh, also, black has something called the bishop pair. So when you got the bishop pair, that means you've got control over those colors. So white would love to trade off this bishop. So let me play the move d5, because you guys all probably want the move d5. I'm just going to analyze here a bit so I can show you. So we take, we take, we play move bishop a6. If we trade on a6, our bishop is gone, and when we lose the bishop, we lose control over those colors. So now these light squares are more sensitive because we've lost that uh, light square bishop. Go back. D5 is a good move, but um, a better move is A6. This is uh, the best move in the position. Or I think the best engine suggested or engine suggested move. Now we've taken away two squares from the bishop. So our move has reduced the scope of our opponent's piece, this piece, the bishop. Taken away this square, taken away this square. And also we threaten to trap the bishop. So he plays this move, b5, bishop here, trapped. Even if it goes the other way, it's trapped. So this a6 move, very strong move, threatening to trap the bishop and stopping our opponent from trading off the bishop. So say it goes a3 or a4, sorry, a3 or a4 to keep the bishop. Now, do you guys go d5 or would you do something else? What would you guys do? Okay, so d5 should be the best move here by far. So we take, we try it off. Now remember, what we liked about our opponent. We liked that he had a semi-open file. Okay, but now we have an open file. It's the same as the bishop somewhere, uh, d3. So now we have an open file. So the semi-open file, what is useful for our opponent. So we, we've um, we've given ourselves a trump. Now we've given this bishop uh, the d6 way. So now the bishop has more scope. Um, one of the disadvantages of playing d5 is this bishop now. There's slightly less scope now because we put a pawn on that square. Um, so let's say bishop d6, rook e1, uh, g6. If we put this into the engine, it gives about minus one for black, so black should be significantly better by this stage. Um, Bishop b6, b5 is a very good idea, but the problem is, and I'll show you now, is that black takes the pawn. This pawn hanging, so we traded that one for that one. We would love to play bishop b6, b5 because we open the a file. I'm going to show you guys another idea. It'll look a bit strange, but I'll, you'll understand in a second. 
Okay. Um, in the initial position, I'll show you what white does when it's way to move. But after the move a6, a4 is not the best move. What do you, what do you guys think is the best move from for white? Yeah, so, so it was quick and so, so correctly e5. It's e5 move. Although it looks like it gives up a pawn. Now that we've lost the dark square bishop and our pawns are going to stay on those light squares, um, our advantage has quite slipped quite a bit. Um, cheerio, I'll see you zero. Let me just say bye bye. Now that we've uh, lost the uh, light square bishop, our scope for that bishop's gone. Although we won a pawn, um, our pieces are not that good anymore. This bishop is now controlled by these ones. The knight gets a square, the rook can use the file, and it's bishop of opposite color, so the pawn is not as valuable as it seems. And if we trade on e5, so let's see, we take with the queen. Um, let's say we trade. Now, now, our opponent has traded off their pawn. So, when you trade off more pie uh, pieces when you're in a worse position, it makes your position a bit easier. So, they their only goal for white now, uh, for white, is to try to trade off the bishop. So, I'm going to go bishop e2, bishop b f3, and make the scope of this bishop. Um, limit the scope of this bishop. So, um, so e5 would be a good move, but uh, black's still better. You'll still see minus one, because at minimum, because um, after you take here, uh, the best move here is I think queen c6. So we can keep the pressure here, and then we uh, put a rook on the file. We can play rook bishop d6. I just want to show you a slightly different idea from from black. So after a4. D5 is a very good move, but uh, I want to ask you, what do you guys think of this move? Um, bye bye, Max. Max says he has to go. Okay. Um, no G4. Where did that's nothing? Okay. So I'm going to explain this move <laughs> briefly so you guys can understand. So after the white plays H3, we play this move 95. We willingly. Uh, oh, what was the question, Disting? Oh, so I asked, um, what do you think of Knight G4? Sorry, I'm answering the question, so it's too late. All right, knight g4. The idea of knight g4 is play knight e5. We willingly double our pawns. But look at this position carefully. Although we have doubled pawns, one, we still have our bishop pair. Two, the knight here is still as bad and controlled. There's no forward squares. White's center. He's not pushing his center anymore. We still have pressure on the pawn. He's not playing f4. And if they put pressure on the file, then we'll just trade off on the file ourselves. And now we have one simple goal. Play b5, infiltrate down the file. So I just want to continue with a move from white. Rook f1. Okay, so... Our goal is to play b5. So now we play this move that looks a bit strange. Queen c8. It looks a bit strange to play this, but that we need to control this a6 point. 
white plays knight f1, try to activate the knight. Bishop c6, we control this twice, uh, a6 twice. Knight e3, queen b7. Now he cannot stop the b5 break. Let's say g3, b5, takes, takes. The bishop has to go somewhere. Um, actually, the bishop can't go somewhere, so it's going to be trapped. Um, let's, let's say you move the queen so the bishop can come back, sorry. B5, takes, takes, bishop e2 or f1. And we can go rook a2, and we start targeting their pawns. We can expand more on the king side. So this move looks a bit strange, knight g4. But the idea is to play against all opponent's position. 